the original TR-3B was, was 200 feet across, the prototype. It was codenamed Astra, and I was just informed by Jeff Rents when I did his radio show that Astra has, has connections all the way back uh, to the Indian flying vehicles several thousand years ago, which is interesting, they codenamed it Astra. The tactical reconnaissance TR-3B first flight was in the early 90s. The triangular-shaped, nuclear-powered aerospace platform was developed under the Top Secret Aurora program. By 1994, there were three billion-dollar-plus operational models. These are the, the operational model is 600 feet across. This flying triangle is not fiction. If you don't believe me, ask the tens of thousands of people who have now spotted one version or another of it from Belgium to England. Ken can tell you about people that have seen it in England to Arizona. The TR-3B vehicle's outer coating is reactive to electrical radar stimulation and can change reflectiveness, radar absorptiveness, and color. The polymer skin, when used in conjunction with electronic countermeasures and ECCM, can make the vehicle look like a small aircraft, flying cylinder, or even trick radar receivers into falsely detecting a variety of aircraft, an aircraft in another location, multiple aircraft, or no aircraft at all. The circular plasma field accelerator ring, called the magnetic field disruptor, surrounds a rotatable crew compartment. It's far ahead of anything you've ever imagined as far as technology. Sandia and Livermore Laboratories developed a reverse engineered MFD, and I believe the government will go at any lengths to protect this technology. But you're not going to be able to build one of these from what I tell you, nor am I. So, The government will go to any lengths, believe me. The plasma in this accelerator is mercury-based. It's pressurized at 250,000 atmospheres at a temperature of 150 degrees Kelvin, superconductivity, and accelerated to 60,000 revolutions per minute to create a superconductive plasma with the resulting gravity energy. The MFD generates a magnetic vortex field, which disrupts and neutralizes the effects of gravity on mass within proximity by 89%. Do not misunderstand, this is not anti-gravity. Anti-gravity you can use as a propulsive force. The mass of the circular accelerator and all the mass within the accelerator, such as the crew compartment, avionics, MFD systems, fuels, environmental systems, and nuclear reactor are reduced by 89%. This causes the effect of making the aircraft extremely light and able to outperform any aircraft yet constructed except, of course, those we didn't build. TR-3B is a high-altitude stealth reconnaissance platform with indefinite loiter time. Once you get it up there at speed, it doesn't take much propulsion, propulsion to maintain altitude. With the vehicle's mass reduced by 89%, the vehicle can travel at Mach 9 vertically or horizontally. So for those that have had sightings of things making right and they're not perfect right turns, obviously. Nothing can make a perfect right turn. It's against the laws of physics. But it sure looks like a right turn at a distance. For those that have seen it, that's how they do it. The TR-3B is, uh, uses three multi-mode thrusters mounted on each corner of the triangular platform. The multi-mode propulsion system can operate in the atmosphere with thrust provided by the nuclear reactor, and in the upper atmosphere with hydrogen propulsion, and in orbit with combined hydrogen and oxygen propulsion. The original picture of the TR-3B was taken with a digital camera that was carried on a <clears throat> special operation C-130 out of Herbert Field. It was flying mission support for the TR-3B. Uh, the current picture, by the way, that was developed uh, with 3D Studio from that digital picture hangs in the black vault at uh, Lockheed. So the U.S. Air Force and the NSA have got 600 feet wide platforms that can take off from a standing start silently, travel into space and back, and who knows where in the solar system or even outside of the solar system. They've had these or a fleet of these since the early 1990s and they've told no one about them. So wake up folks, uh, the space shuttle and the Apollo programs were diversions to stop you from realizing what the US Air Force has been doing for the last 30 or 40 years. Do you want to comment, Andrew? Yeah, I, can't, I couldn't really put it better than that. I mean, um, I do think that the, all the Apollo program and the similar programs were a distraction, mm -hmm. and they were to soak up 
you know, the relevant amount of expertise and uh, curiosity about space travel, and that hel all helps to keep the focus away from all mm. the black programs such as such as the TR3B, and, and I think as Ed will talk about, there are probably others which we don't really know about. Mm. Um, and w what he says about the development of the craft, it, it can only, they only manage to get it to reduce its weight by 89%, yeah. therefore they put it inside a triangle and put thrusters on the three corners of the triangle which use hydrogen propulsion or hydrogen oxygen propulsion, yeah. so it's got these jets on the three corners yeah. in order to, to reduce that last bit of weight or, or get it off the ground and also right. propel it, uh, and he alleges that it's capable of Mach 9, did he say? Yeah, in Mach, 9. E Mach 9. That's nine times the speed of sound, either vertically or horizontally. Yeah. And, and I think Ed is fairly convinced that these, the TR3B is what was witnessed in the Belgian UFO sightings. Yeah. yeah. This was in 91, or no, 1990, I think. Yeah, yeah. 89, I think, or 1990. 89 or 1990. So yeah. they were flying them around Belgium and parts of Europe, and the Air Force were chasing them. Yep, <laughs> yep, yep. You know, we, as you've reported on your documentary, Richard, this is partly why. Uh, you know, I got in touch with you about this because I think it ties in with your almost identified uh, flying objects in yeah. the documentary at some level. Yeah. You know, we don't know, but if you look at what the witnesses that you have in that documentary described, you can see a pretty strong similarity to what Edgar Fouché describes. And we've got to remember that Edgar Fouché disclosed this information in '98, mm -hmm. so it's way before you know your documentary came out, yeah. way before you and I were really into this yeah. material. Yeah, yeah. So we're not saying that. There's, there's some unexplained or possibly non-human element to some right. UFO cases. What we're saying is that some of the triangular ones we're pretty sure are undisclosed craft with phenomenal technology on them. Right, right. Now, All right then, Andrew, thanks again for your comments. Fascinating stuff as usual. And it just remains for me to say, I believe none of what you hear and only half of what you see. I'm Richard D. Hall. Good night.